Hi there, I'm Ronnie Jones, and this here, it's the Good Taste Pony. Now, I get a lot of letters from the children at home saying, Dear Ronnie, should I be afraid of Indians? Well, the answer is yes, you should. Because being scalped in the night is a real threat. <laughs> about to begin. Mr. Daniels, is it for the chest x-ray? Yes. Excellent. All right, what I'll get you to do is just stand here. Yeah. Just remain very, very still. And we should have this over in no time, all right? Okay. Um, yeah, I might just get you to take your shirt off. It's be better for the x-ray. Okay. Great. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> still not doing it for me. Could you just pout a little bit, just to... <laughs> and um, just stick your fist under your chin. <laughs> and um, try the other one. Yeah, that's great. All right, just stay there. Okay, I might just try this on. Just to see how that goes. Uh, don't lose the chin. There we go. All right, just hold that. <laughs> Say, can you just release this stuff? <laughs> and release. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Sure, what I came across the other day. Mm -hmm. This guy had parked in a loading zone, right? But he was in a hatchback. What a dickhead. <laughs> I love when they leave a note saying they've broken down. <laughs> I'll be back in a second. <laughs> Well, today I had a guy who was rolling down on his wheelchair mm. down this hill. Mm. He was parked illegally. Did he get it? Of course he did. Not my fault. He's a cripple. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just got all that right. Me, I, after I'd given out a ticket, as if I could just take it back. Oh. It's that easy. Why can't these people just realise we're trying to do our job? Mm. I mean, we like it a little bit, but no one ever grudges that to a, a teacher or a surgeon, do they? No, you're right. Oh, yeah, I said so good. Oh, really? Let me have a go. Mm. That last sketch may have offended parking inspectors, but what are they going to do? Find me? Damn it, Pony, I told you to kick them in the groin when you see an orange envelope. <laughs> Hello. Uh, look, I was in a few weeks ago. I borrowed this book, uh, 1984. All right. Did you just want to return it? Or? Y yeah, but uh, look, oh, I don't want to start nothing. But this George Orwell man, he doesn't seem to know what really happened in 1984. I don't know if you realise. Now, nah, look, I don't think you realise. 1984 was a great year. You know, lots of things happened that were really good, like uh, Karate Kid. That was a top movie. He, he doesn't mention Mr. Miyagi once. What's on? Wax off! Wax off! Wax off! It's, it's actually a fictional text and none of it is true. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's bullshit. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry to swear. Oh, no, this is the house of God. I'm fairly sure that a lot of people know that it's fictional. Put a stick on it. Put a, put a stick on it that says, not a true story. A little bit bullshit. No, Mr. Miyagi. All right, well, I'll discuss that with the library. Okay, good. Good. Because, you know, 1984 was a great time, you know, spoky dokies, <laughs> leg warmers, put all that in, yeah? But you, you don't have to say I said nothing, that's all right. I don't want a statue of me in the park. <laughs> it would be nice, though. No, but that is a very big cost to the city, so no thank you. But, you know, just put a stick on it. Right, I'll, um, I'll start today. Okay, thanks. I'll go my on you. I've got a big brother. How would you like it if someone pissed on your car? It is my car. <laughs> Gary, Gary, I have some very serious findings to discuss with you. Now, if you'll have a look at these x-rays, you can see that there is severe tissue and ligament damage around the groinal area, in particular, the testes, epididymis, and even the bladder. Yeah, 
and... And the damage to your reproductive system is, is almost on its way to becoming permanent. I mean, I, I'm just surprised at how two boys your age could have this much scar tissue. I, I mean, short of being kicked repeatedly by an angry wild horse... I, what have you been doing to each other? Um, I, I don't have any idea, I'm sorry. The amount of scar tissue that is building up will permanently impede the function of your vas deferens. What does that mean? In incontinence, infertility and, and permanent erectile dysfunction. Ow. We jungle. Uh, sorry. Uh, you'll just excuse me for a moment. Hey, Gary. Yes, Gary. Do you want to kick me in the junglies for old time's sake? One last time, couldn't hurt. It never hurt, Gary. <laughs> kick me in the junglies! Second opinion. <laughs> Kick it out! Oh, Gary, Gary. Permission to operate. Oh, doctors. Oh, Gary. Every time I get the good taste pony x rayed, he has two pelvises, but only one doodle. And that gives him a bad pelvis to doodle ratio. <laughs> Not enough doodles. <laughs>
How much are your ice creams? Waffle or cone? Cone. Uh, dollar twenty. I'll have three. Okay. There you go. What did you do that for? I don't like your ice cream. Excuse me, my name is Poppy. Can I show you my pictures, please? This is a picture of my daddy, and he's mowing the lawn, and he's not very happy about it. And in Tasmania, they have lots of trees on their lawn that they have to mow down. Um, lucky is the farmers because they don't have to mow their lawn at all. And I didn't know this, but some birds come in a six pack. Did you know that? And it's very hard to get the tag off, so nice um, ship drivers put special grease in the water to help them. And all the countries over all the world like to protect the environment, so they signed the Coyote Agreement. Ow! But Australia didn't, and Mother Nature got very cranky. She got so cranky, she took all our water away, and then she gave it to America. <laughs> so these are my pictures, and I am puffy. Uh, you know it's uh, High Five a Muslim Day on the 28th of February this year? Yeah, I heard about that. Okay, well, what we're asking you to do is basically give a big smack you one up high to anyone who looks Islamic. Are, are you a are you, are you Muslim? Okay, well, will you, can I give you one? Oh, that, oh, that was good. <laughs> high Five's a Muslim Day. High Five a Muslim Day. I slam for Islam. High Five me, I'm Islamic. That's great. Muslims are great. Yeah, should bring everyone together, like, you know, Muslims and Australians and Aussie, we're all so where are you going to be on the 28th of February? Wednesday, is that Australia Day or? Oh, no, it's, it's high five on Muslim Day. Oh. Oh. I don't want to argue with you, Chopper. No, fucking let's just sort this out with a big fucking high five, eh? There you go. Give us a high five. Down low. Too slow. <laughs> oh, just joking. Give me one right up here. There you go. Check out this guy in the front row. Jeez, man, do you always wear sunglasses inside? How cool are you? I'm blind. Wow, this is, this is awkward. Uh, almost as awkward as the time that I, uh, I, I sold my tampons to this guy for a million bucks. It's a real rags to riches story. Okay, uh, I, I've been Sarah Polka and you haven't. Thank you. And a critical fall there for Sarah in the audience interaction section of her routine. The judges will have noticed that, but the coach seems very pleased. Yes, she did open strong with a fantastic differences between guys and girls combination. Here are the scores. 4.9, 7.9, 6.5, 9.8, 3.3, 0.0 and 2.1. Yes, and a big spread of scores. A 9.8 from the American, but failing to raise a smile from the Iraqi judge. And Sarah is noticeably unhappy. Here we go again. Homeless man's seen the coins in my hand and he's going to ask me, Excuse me, matey, can you spare a buck for a feed? Excuse me, matey, can you spare a buck for a feed? <laughs> he's not going to buy food, he's going to buy alcohol. Anyway, cue sob story. Three, two, one. Come on, matey, I've been on the streets for years. And it's, it's just me and the dog, I've got cancer in my guts. And, you know, my mum's dead. And, you know, I've lost all my money and I just need 30 bucks to just... Oh, I've heard it all before, mate. Hang on. Maybe this guy's not homeless. Maybe he's an actor. And, you know, yeah, good maker. No, that's terrible. Of course he's homeless. But maybe he's got a home and just doesn't like it. What's that called? Homophobia? Oh, no, it's a okay, houses. Ah, oh, so you've got a dog, eh? You can't get a job, but you can get a pet. If he was really hungry, wouldn't he just eat the dog? <laughs> you can't eat a pet. But it's not my pet. Maybe I could eat the dog, then he wouldn't have to feed it. 
Just add a little bit of tzatziki. <laughs> Come on, mate. Can you spare us a dollar? All right, all right. I'll eat your dog. <laughs> Some of you folks may be thinking that last sketch was offensive to homeless people. But I ran it past my homeless friend, Crazy George. Do you know what he said? He didn't reply because he was eating a pigeon. <laughs> Guten Tag, Fashionistas, und welcome to Fashion Parade. We are very unaffected to be here. And here we have our first model of conformity. <laughs> A predictable gothic ensemble. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing says oppress me now like this charming little trench coat steel cap number. Und strat und flaunt it. Here is Fifi. And she has paired the social custom of the bootleg pant and the tankini. Oh, you're naughty. You want it. Get off the stage! <laughs> and finally, we have Cassandra, who wears a full fur capelet oh, with a matching worthless man bag. Remember, Sigmund, worthlessness is this summer's hottest accessory. <laughs> and feel it and sass it. Your fake fur is more genuine than your apathy. Get off the stage! <laughs> You used to be a model, Gretchen, yeah? Yeah. Tell us about it now. I was too fat. <laughs> but black is slimming, no? So it's starving yourself so that people think you're beautiful. <laughs> well, that is the end of our shameless display. <laughs> Until next time, capitalist cloth buyers. Ah, wieder Schnitzel. Und strike a pose. Strike a pose. Und Vogue. Und Vogue. Und I just don't think that you're going to spend no, look, a while. Knowing whether a homeless person right. actually yeah. deserves your charity yeah, is always a difficult yeah, decision. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they're not homeless, or right, maybe they're just acting that drunk that to get your money. Farm. Well, a brand new state government initiative is about to change all of this. Each authentic homeless person will receive their very own violinist to play sad music so that you know your money is going to a good cause. <laughs> <laughs> now, isn't that a lot better? <laughs> this has been another third-degree community service announcement. Man, if I was homeless, I'd ask for a bass guitar. I mean, just because you're homeless doesn't mean you can't be funky. Help! Uh, get on back. I'm hungry. <laughs>Massive head trauma, possible spinal injuries, and severe damage to the leg. Rightio. Look, if we operate on her now, she may be able to walk again. Okay. Can you help me with get these jeans yeah. off? Oh. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> that's worse than I thought. Oh, God. Oh, she's wearing dirty undies. <laughs> Didn't the mother ever teach her anything? Oh. Are they skin marks? <laughs> what should we do with her now? Oh, I don't know. Take her to a vet or something? I mean, <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> honey, I'm home. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, honey, I, uh, I can explain. Robbo? Oh. Robbo, is that, is that you? Yeah, mate. Um, oh, God. Oh, um, shit. Uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> mate? Yeah, look how the you. hell are you? Thanks, <laughs> oh, What a surprise. What are you doing here? Um. Um. Oh, sorry. How's my manners? <laughs> uh, Jenny, this is Robbo. Robbo, uh, Robbo this is Jenny. Uh, uh, we've met. Oh, the Christmas party. That's right. Um, aren't you angry? Why would I be angry? Robbo's here! Here he is! <laughs> yeah, but don't you know what's going on here? Yeah, we're catching up with Robbo. How have you been, mate? Yeah, yeah, all right. We've been all right. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. You're looking uh, pretty rooted, mate. <laughs> <laughs> do you want a drink or something, honey? Do you want to get Robbo uh, a cordial? Or... No. Beers? Beers for Robbo. No, no, no. Uh, look, mate, do you not realise what's going on here? I'm cheating on you. 
No, no. Sorry, mate. No! I'm so sorry. How long have you known about this, mate? <laughs> From the beginning. Get out. Get out of the bed. Put, put some pants on. <laughs> you and I are going to step outside and we're going to catch this bastard. <laughs> If you catch a loved one cheating on you, do what I did. Just say three-way and then touch his bottom till it becomes awkward and leaves. Seamus! Seamus, is that you? Paddy! Oh, Seamus, I haven't seen you in so long. Oh. oh, what the hell have you been up to? Well, I've I've been overseas. I've I've raised a family and made some money, but but what have you been up to? Well, I spent my whole life in Ireland, so not much to be sure. But you must have done a lot. Well, I've you must have done everything there is to do. Well, I've had a very full life, that's for sure. But now that you mention it, there is one thing I have never ever done. <laughs> well, the years of my life. Had done gone past me, boy. As a wee one, I've grown, come of age. From the green woods of youth, I've emerged, but the, the truth is I've never gone down on a lady. <laughs> Skin white as milk and with gold flowing hair But I've never gone down to that hair that's down there No, I've never gone down on a lady No, he's never been down, no, he's never been down No, he's never been down on a lady No, he's never been down, no, he's never been down No, he's never been down on a lady Well, they've had many chances to grapple with Titty And she's all And I feel like I owe her. Oh, hell, what's that odor? No, no he's never been down. No, he's never been down. No, he's never been down. Thank <laughs> you.